Hello, and very glad to be back for another episode of Fright Size Weirdness. It's been a while, so I'm just going to dive straight into this one. I'll be doing this episode on John George Hay, better known as the Acid Bath Killer. Born 24th of July 1909, hung on the 10th of August 1949. He officially killed six people, but definitely claimed the lives of nine. During his early life, he was born in Stamford, Lincolnshire. His parents were engineers, John Robert and Emily Nee Hudson, both members of the Plymouth Brethren, a conservative Protestant section. He was confined to living within a 10 feet wall that his father put up around their garden to lock out the outside world. During his childhood, he experienced many religious nightmares, but but despite his great limitations, he learned the piano and went on to win two scholarships, the first at Queen Elizabeth Grammar School and the second scholarship at Wakefield Cathedral, where he became a choir boy. After school, he was an apprentice to a firm of motor engineers, but this was short-lived, because after a, a year, he left that job and took jobs in insurance and advertising. At age 21, he was fired after being suspected of stealing from a cash box. Surprisingly, he got married on the 6th of July 1934. Hay married 23-year-old Patrice Betty Hamer. The marriage soon disintegrated. The same year that Hay was jailed for fraud, Betty gave birth while he was in prison. But she gave up the baby girl for adoption and left Hay. While in prison, Hay had come up with the perfect murder by dissolving people in sulfuric acid. He experimented with mice and found it took 30 minutes for the body to dissolve. Whether he had come up with this himself or had heard the ideas of other prisoners, I don't know. But either way, he was partly successful. He was released from one term in 1943 and became an accountant with an engineering firm. More by chance and sheer luck, he bumped into his former employer, McSwan, in the Goat Pub in Kensington. McSwan introduced Hay to his parents, Donald and Amy, who mentioned that they had invested in property. On the 6th of September 1944, McSwan disappeared. Hay later admitted hitting him over the head and lowering him into a basement. He then put McSwan's body into a 40 gallon drum and tipped concentrated sulfuric acid onto it. Two days later he returned to find that the body had become sludge which he later poured down a manhole. Hay, later on, went to tell McSwan's parents that their son had gone into hiding to avoid being called up for military service. He quickly took over McSwan's house. After a while, Donald and Amy became curious as to why their son had not returned as the war was coming to an end, so he murdered them too. On the 2nd of July, 1945, he lured them to Gloucester Road and disposed of them. He cashed them at Swan's pension checks and sold their property for £8,000. He then moved into Onslow Court Hotel in Kensington. 
Hay was a ruthless gambler and quickly running low on money, so he promptly sorted out his next victims. Hay found an unsuspecting couple. Rob, better known as Dr. Archibald Henderson, and his wife, Rose. He murdered them after feigning interest in a house that they were selling. He was invited to the Henderson's flat by Rose to play the piano for their housewarming party. Hay had played the piano ever since he was a small boy, but the killing didn't stop there as he moved to the next victim. He rented a small workshop at 2 Leopold Way, Crawley, Sussex, and moved acid and drums there from Gloucester's Road. Hay was also known to have stayed at Crawley's George Hotel on several occasions. On the 12th of February 1948, he drove Henderson to Crawley on the pretext of showing him an invention. When they arrived, Hay shot Henderson in the head with a revolver that he had earlier stolen from the doctor's house. He then lured Miss Henderson to the workshop, claiming that her husband had fallen ill and shot her too. After disposing of the Henderson's bodies in oil drums filled with acid, he forged a letter from them and sold all of their possessions for £8,000, except for their dog, a motor car, which he kept. His last victim was Olive Durand Deacon. She was the wealthy widow of solicitor John Durand Deacon and the fellow resident at Ongsall Court Hotel. By this time, Hay was calling himself an engineer, and Olive mentioned an idea to him that she had for artificial fingernails. Hay invited her to Leopold Road Workshop on the 18th of February, 1949, and once inside, he shot her in the back of the neck with the 38 caliber Webley revolver that he had stolen from Archibald Henderson. Stripped her of her valuables, including a Persian lamb coat, and put her into the acid bath. Two days later, Deacon's friend, Miss Lane, reported her missing. Hay, though, was soon investigated, and he left a paper trail of theft, fraud, and a dry cleaning receipt of Miss Duran Deacon's Persian coat and also papers referring to the Henderson and Swans. Upon further investigation of the sludge at the workshop by pathologist Keith Simpson, revealed three human gallstones and part of a denture, which was later identified by Miss Duran Deacon's dentist during the trial and conviction. Hey, asked Detective Inspector Albert Webb during questioning, tell me, frankly, what are the chances of anybody being released from Broadmoor? Broadmoor, for you who don't know, is a high security psychiatric hospital. The inspector said that he could not discuss that sort of thing, so he replied, well, if I told you the truth, you would not believe me. It sounds too fantastic to believe. Hay then confessed that he had killed Duran Deacon, the McSwans and the Hendersons, as well as three other people, a young man called Max, a girl from Eastbourne, and a woman from Hammersmith. These claims could not be sustained. Sorry, these claims could not be substantiated. After the arrest, Hay remained in custody in cell 2 of Horsham Police Station in Bartolium Road. He was charged with murder and the nearby courthouse in what is now known as the Old Town Hall. 
Hay pleaded insanity, claiming that he had drunk the blood of his victims. Hay also confessed to having dreams dominated by blood as a young boy. When he was involved in a car accident in March 1944, his dream returned to him. I saw before me a forest of crucifixes, which gradually turned into trees. At first, there appeared to be dew or rain dripping from the branches. But as I approached, I realised it was blood. The whole forest began to riv, rife. The whole forest began to rife and the trees dark and erect to ooze blood. A man went from each tree catching the blood. When the cup was full, he approached me. Drink, he said. But I was unable to move. However, as stated above, he had previously asked the police officer what are the chances getting out of Broadmoor. The Attorney General, Sir Hartley Shawcross KC, later Lord Shawcross, led for the prosecution at Louise Assis Aziz. Sorry, I can't pronounce that word, guys and urged the jury to reject Hayes' defence of insanity because he had acted with malice. Sir David Maxwell, defending, called many witnesses to attest to Hayes' mental state, including Dr Henry Yellowless, who claimed Hay had a paranoid constitution adding the absolute callous, cheerful, bland and almost friendly indifference of the accused to the crimes which he freely admits having committed is unique in my experience. It took only minutes for the jury to find Hay guilty. Mr Justice Travis Humphreys sentenced him to death. It was reported that Hay, in that Hay, in the condemned cell at Wan Wandsworth Prison, asked one of his prison guards, Jack Morwood, whether it would be possible to have a trial run of his hanging so everything would run smoothly. It is likely that his request went no further, or if it did, the request was denied. Hay was led to the gallows and hanged by execution at Albert P., on the 10th of August 1949. The case of John George Hay was one of the post-1945 cases which gained considerable coverage in the newspapers. Even though Hay's guilt was not questioned, the editor of the Daily Mirror, the Mirror Sylvester Bolam, was sentenced to a prison term for contempt of court for describing Hay as a murderer while the trial was still underway. Hey guys, so that, that was it. That was all of it. There's loads more information on this guy. I know that there's a few little bits in there that I did kind of mess up, but I really just... I, I don't know. I just didn't want to go back through it to re-record it all. That's basically it, guys. I am, with not having the time... So, um, doing this is going to be hard for me time wise so I can't get every single thing perfect okay I'm trying it's been a while this is my first one in ages so things are definitely going to get better I just I hope that you've enjoyed it I've enjoyed making it I've enjoyed writing it I've enjoyed finding out about this guy Um, next week's one is going to be about the I can't remember the names. Is it like the Dudley brothers or the Riley brothers or something like that? It's I can't remember the names properly. I was looking up the other day though. Great little story. Definitely worth a check out for next week, guys. 
Um, thanks if you've got to the end. Please subscribe. Please, please like. Please leave a comment. Tell me what you did like, what you didn't like, etc., etc. I'll leave the links where I got all my information from, which was Wikipedia. Um, but yeah, guys, thanks very much for watching. Really appreciate it. You know, every view just gives me more encouragement to carry on making videos, basically. You know, even though I've not made one for a while, I'm always checking my channel, always looking at, um, have I got more views, have I got more subscribers, yes, yes, yes. And it just, it, it really gives me that push to keep going. So thank you very much, guys, and I will see you next week.